Sage Consulting recently compiled an independent ranking of the top 10 ERP failures of all time. And there are a ton of lessons to be learned from these case studies. In fact, failures like these can teach us about the things that we shouldn't do, as well as the things that we should do. And in this video, we're going to unpack one of the highest profile failures to see what lessons we can all learn from this unfortunate transformation failure. Perhaps you've heard about this one, but you may not know what exactly went wrong. So let's now turn it over to Eric Kimberling, the CEO and founder of Third Stage Consulting, who will tell us more about this high profile ERP failure. National Grid, the large utility company in the US, National Grid invested over a billion dollars on their SAP implementation. And yes, I said a billion, not a million or any other number, but one billion dollars plus on their SAP implementation, and it failed. The reason we can say with certainty that it failed were some of the results that they also publicly announced and that was widely reported in the media as a result of their go live. Some of the metrics that came out of the company as a result were that, uh, for example, the company had to spend $100 million in services to support the implementation after the fact. So after they went live, they spent another $100 million just supporting and stabilizing the system as it was rolled out. They also had two system integrators. They had Wipro involved, and actually they filed a lawsuit against Wipro. And you can find in, on my YouTube channel a whole video that talks just about the National Grid versus Wipro lawsuit. But they had Wipro, whom they sued, and they also ended up bringing in Ernst & Young, a second system integrator and a second expensive integrator to help uh, support the implementation because it wasn't going well with Wipro. By the end of the project, the company was spending about $30 million a month just supporting the project and trying to get the product up and running and to get through the implementation, which for any size company is just a ridiculous amount of money to be spending on trying to implement new technology. In addition, some of the end results of their operations after go live their, their whole process for the period end closed used to take four days before they rolled out the new ERP system. It took 43 days after they went live. So definitely a negative ROI there after spending all that money. And then finally, their post go live accounts payable processes resulted in about 15,000 unpaid supplier invoices that they just couldn't process and they couldn't pay. So they had a lot of suppliers and vendors that weren't very happy with them at the time. So what gives? Why did these projects fail? And more importantly, what can we do to avoid this type of disaster? Or more likely, how can we avoid a more moderate failure that we're not going to read about in the news, but still becomes painful for our organization? How can we navigate those pitfalls? And what is it we can do to avoid this type of failure? Well, first is to choose the right software. Make sure you've got the right technology supporting your business and that you're not choosing software and implementing software in a biased way. The second thing is to choose the right system integrator. Make sure you have the right partner or partners helping you implement. Um, just because it's a big name or a well-known name system integrator doesn't mean that you're immune to failure or that you won't get fired or that your project won't fail. Another thing to do is to remember that you are in charge of your project. This is your project. It's not the software vendors. It's not your system integrators. And you need to do what you need to do to make this project successful. If your system integrator isn't working out, course correct. Either give them clear direction on what you expect from them or fire them if you need to, bring in additional help, whatever it is you need. And also make sure that you're the one mitigating risks and identifying risks. System integrators generally aren't very good at mitigating risks and identifying where the risks are because they're the, the fox guarding the hen house, so to speak. So you need to have independent risk mitigation as part of this whole concept of making sure that you're in charge and you do what you need to do to make the project successful. The other thing to remember is that operational disruption is your biggest risk and potentially your biggest cost for the implementation. Too often companies will cut corners and step over dollars to pick up pennies. And what they'll do is they'll underinvest in things like organizational change management. They'll try to unreasonably compress the timeline and they'll cut the budget. And they'll do this all in the name of saving money and thinking that they're increasing ROI but well, what they aren't looking at is what's going to happen on the other side when they go live and this materially affects their business. Generally, the companies that have operational disruptions find that that money lost and spent after go live is a lot more damaging than the money they could have spent to get it right in the first place early on in the implementation. 